Now we look to the Florida skies again. This time, we have lots of witnesses. And thankfully, one was a loyal viewer who sent us his own video. February 9th, 2021, Southern Florida. Stuart Eck is on the road when a flash of light makes him pull over. It's not the police, it's this. Oh my goodness. Awesome, it's sunrise. A large white plume unfurls across the sky, growing larger and larger. He's not frightened, but he is amazed. You see the shockwave go out? Oh, wow, awesome! I looked over and uh, it was a giant flame in the sky. Take another look. As the light passes over Stewart, it leaves behind a massive trail. It ballooned out like it was exploding or something very different was going on. And it was one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life. Not everyone Stewart talked to was as smitten with the object. Unbelievable. It scared a lot of people to death thinking it was some type of, of weapon coming in from outer space. Florida is a UFO hotspot. It's actually second only to California. There have been 7,000 sightings of UFOs in Florida since 1998. But UFOs are consistently reported to fly without leaving visible exhaust or contrails. And there's another theory, a very human, high-tech weapon reported to leave a distinctive exhaust trail. The Chinese military already claims to have developed something called a hypersonic missile. As the name suggests, it travels at five times the speed of sound at low altitude. That's a game changer because such a weapon could make it from the human missile silos in central China to Washington, D.C., evading radar and existing air defense systems until it is already well over U.S. airspace. And American nuclear submarines reportedly now have their own hypersonic missile, dubbed the Sea Dragon. So that might be what Stewart witnessed. Another theory? This is some new rocket being developed by a space entrepreneur like Elon Musk. Notice how both this 2017 SpaceX launch and the one in Stewart's video have glowing contrails due to an effect you may have seen in an earlier episode about a suspected Chinese rocket. While it's dark on the ground, the rocket and its contrails are high up enough to be illuminated by the sun, even though it's over the horizon. But exactly what sort of rocket, missile, or other craft could be creating the huge exhaust trail in Stewart's video is a mystery. SpaceX's Falcon 9 has become the most flown operational U.S. rocket, reaching orbit 24 times in 2020. So could this be another Elon Musk venture? Or is there something else more troubling going on? First, astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio considers if this could be a jet going supersonic. When the jet approaches the sound barrier, you'll see a condensation front along the front of the jet. In moist air, a speeding plane creates low pressure areas where water condenses in a vapor cone. As the plane speeds up, the cloud moves down the body. And when the plane breaks through the sound barrier, it outraces the water droplets and the cone disappears. What we're seeing here, though, is a continuous plume that's persistent. So this is definitely not a supersonic jet. Our aviation expert, Tim McMillan, thinks he can narrow it down further. That teardrop shape and, and that contrail there, that is characteristic of uh, you know, some type of rocket or potentially a, a missile test. But when McMillan checks the SpaceX launch schedule, he rules out any Elon Musk-related UFOs. So could this be a new weapon system, like the Sea Dragon? The U.S. is just now kind of getting into the hypersonics game and, and trying to develop more operational hypersonic platforms. When D'Antonio digs deeper, he finds the U.S. military had tested submarine-launched missiles in the area that day. But the military won't say what exactly was launched. If it was a missile test of some kind, it's probably a missile that they don't want you to know about. Despite the strange appearance, we're calling this one a rocket or missile launch. But what rocket or missile, we may never know. What's clear is that the U.S. is in a race to develop unstoppable hypersonic missiles. So we may be witnessing one of the very first tests. October 2013, South Florida, off the coast of Sanibel Island in the Gulf of Mexico. A couple is enjoying a clear day on their fishing boat when they suddenly notice something camera-worthy. What the f is that? Go, go. I don't know what that is, Dave. Just hold on. Let's see that again. 
The woman heard in the video describes the creature as a giant snake-like monster, longer than 20 feet and as thick as a large utility pole. Field researcher Ken Gerhardt says reported sea monster encounters in this area date back centuries. The most famous happened in 1962. So historically, there have been accounts of monsters and sea serpents in the Gulf of Mexico. Perhaps one of the most dramatic involves a man named Edward Brian McCleary. McCleary and three of his young companions decided to take a raft out to the wreckage of a ship known as the USS Massachusetts. And out of the water came this dinosaur-like, a plesiosaur type of creature, something from prehistoric times. And according to McCleary, this creature essentially killed his three companions and uh, devouring them or drowning them in fairly close proximity to where this video is alleged to have been shot. This clip has logged more than one million views since it was first posted. Take a look right here. It looks scaly and like maybe it's coiled around something. The splash is quick, but it's definitely indicating something large. To help us get some clarity, let's ask our experts. Before I would entertain the idea that this might be some sort of unknown sea monster, I would point out the fact that there are many species of known large animals that live in this area. Based on the size of the boat and its distance from the alleged creature, our experts agree it could be as long as 30 feet. Some people conjecture that this could be an oarfish. The oarfish is the longest bony fish on the planet, with some specimens reaching 30 feet. But Dr. Conger says there's a problem. Oarfish are usually found at depths around 600 feet. Most of the time when we do see them at the surface, it's because they've already been deceased and they are either floating or washed up on shore. Conger also rules out many of the other marine mammals known to roam the shores of the Gulf. This is a really large tubular looking animal that's pretty dark in color. And anything like a whale or a seal wouldn't be as undulating and as distinct as we see in this video. Ultimately, it's the moment when it emerges that has Conger convinced. I think the most likely possibility for this video is actually some type of a large snake that's eating another type of marine animal. When we see a large constrictor species in the water consuming a prey, it will often wrap itself around that prey and spin through the water, and this video seems to be a bit indicative of that. Conger says this isn't just a big snake, but possibly one of the biggest a green anaconda. They get as large as 30 feet with a 12-inch diameter and weigh more than 550 pounds. Imagine that the next time you swim in Florida. So there you have it. This is most likely a large snake preying on a smaller sea animal, most likely a fish, though anacondas can eat animals as big as jaguars. But what do you think? It's 2006 in Pensacola, Florida. David Eckhart is asleep in his bedroom. A closed circuit camera mounted above the bed captures the room bathed in a soft yellow light coming from an open door. Suddenly, the camera picks up something alarming. A short, skinny humanoid figure begins slowly peeking out from behind the open door. David does not stir from his sleep as little by little, the figure creeps further into the doorway, revealing a bizarrely slender leg seemingly just a few inches in diameter, then an oblong head and eventually its whole body. I back and forth until I found it, and then that's what it showed me, and I showed my son, he's like, got these tears coming to his eyes, There's no way. It resembles otherworldly beings commonly described as greys, and this apparently wasn't the first time David has seen one. Eckhart had his first alien encounter while he was camping in the 80s, and that seems to have kicked off a slew of encounters that have occurred ever since then. And so that's why he has security camera footage of his bedroom, because he's hoping to catch these creatures that are visiting him on camera. David wouldn't be the first to report repeated visits from extraterrestrials. It's very rare that I have found an individual that has only had one experience. Invariably, there were multiple experiences, often dating back to childhood. The most famous report of an alien encounter may have been that of Betty and Barney Hill in 1961, but they certainly weren't the first. The earliest may have come over a century ago. One of the earliest attempted alien abductions 
supposedly took place in Stockton, California in 1896. Two men were out riding their horses when they encountered three fuzzy alien creatures. When one of them tried to lift one of the men and found that he couldn't, all three of them beat feet back to their ship and took off. According to one poll, about 3.7 million people believe they've experienced an alien abduction. With so many reported ET encounters, is it possible that one has finally been filmed? Let's make first contact with our experts. First, Michael Primo searches for signs this figure was digitally inserted into the security footage, but couldn't find anything suspicious. From the analysis of these shadows, I didn't detect any major red flags. Anthropologist Kathy Strain sees some definite similarities between this figure and the most common description of grays. I was doing some calculations, and the doorway itself is roughly, on average, six and a half feet tall. And so the height of the creature is roughly three feet tall, which kind of fits the description of what a gray would be. The skin color is definitely gray, so that matches. It's very, very thin. But one thing doesn't quite match. And they're supposed to have very large, dark eyes, almost unnatural in its size. And as you can see for this, even though it's very grainy film, you can't see those large eyes. And I would expect, since that would be the largest feature of its face, that we should be able to see that. So even if the aliens known as greys exist, this isn't one of them. The three-foot height could indicate it's just a child. But Stray notices one other red flag in regards to the figure size. You'll notice above its head, even though it's so small, there is a shadow quite a bit higher than him roughly in this area. The significance of that shadow is it implies that there's a larger person standing behind it. OK, based on the appearance of this shadow right up here, we're going to say that this is an inanimate object, like a mannequin or doll being pushed from behind into the door frame. We'll take the witness's word. He says he didn't move the object but it does not appear that this particular encounter was of extraterrestrial origin. Miami, Florida, in June of 2020, a man on the balcony of a downtown high-rise appears to capture something in the sky, and it's jaw-dropping. Wow, no bull Here's the sky, the sky over here, downtown, my house, my hand. What the is that? Holy Let's push in on that. At first glance, I'm going to say it looks like a triangular craft rimmed by five lights. But a closer look reveals there's a sixth light, and one light is much brighter. And then, well, what is that? What the f The lights fan out like they are six different craft. As the witness continues his play-by-play, -play, oh. they zoom off into space at warp speed. Oh, wait, wait. Bye. Author and journalist Alexis Brooks has written and spoken extensively about UFOs. So the question becomes, could this be a UFO? There are a lot of people having a lot of sightings, particularly in more recent years. In fact, it's been known that a sighting is reported every eight seconds globally. The lights remind some of another weird phenomenon. For decades, orbs called the Hesdalen lights have been seen over Norway sometimes hovering, sometimes shooting off at speeds estimated at 20,000 miles per hour. Always silent, the Hesdalen lights have been known to sterilize soil near where they are sighted. Explanations include UFOs or an anomaly caused by gases released from the Earth. Yet the Miami footage is more orderly, really like UFOs flying in formation. It quickly goes viral. What is that? Oh, oh, wait, wait, bye. <laughs> well, it's incredible. Wow. So what accounts for the strange lights? We have two video experts ready to weigh in. Forensic video analyst Michael Primo examines video evidence for court cases. And he doesn't just focus on what we're seeing, but also on what we're hearing. When we investigate these types of recordings, we detect that there is a human reaction time where the brain needs to essentially catch up. And in this particular case, we don't see any kind of reaction time to a unnatural phenomenon such as this. Downtown, my house, my hand. It's almost as if the operator knows exactly what's going to happen when it happens. He's reacting almost perfectly. There is no reaction time. Oh, wait, wait, bye. 
then he instantly says, okay, bye, and then he pans away from it. It's very strange. I would expect that an operator doesn't simply move away after they see something like that. They stay focused on it. Mark D'Antonio, another video analyst with a degree in astronomy, pointed out something else. Look at how the UFOs move compared to the background when the camera shakes. As we step through this frame by frame, the clouds move and the object doesn't move with the clouds. The object, frame by frame, is changing position while the clouds are more gently moving in one direction. This is evidence of bad tracking, it's called, and it's a process by which you put fake things into real footage to make it look real. And the biggest red flag of all, how could a cluster of UFOs appear over downtown Miami and only one guy notice? Where are the other witnesses? We had one. <laughs> the man who says he made the video declined our request for an interview. Turns out, you can overlay orbs on video with a simple smartphone app. Our verdict is hoax, one that muddies the water for people really trying to study UFOs. We'll call them out when we see them.